Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at this milling machine from 1947. I've had it for almost a year now and decided to try converting it to a CNC machine since the gearbox for the power feed has taken some damage and is um, incredibly expensive to repair. The machine itself is a Kearney and Trekker 2HL and weighs in at around 1200 kilograms or 2600 pounds and seems to have been sold to the Swedish market early in its life. It has power feeds in all directions, including rapid traverse, but they're working a bit unevenly and clunky because of the damaged gearbox. RPMs can be changed between 35 to 1400 ish. Both horizontal and vertical spindle use the ISO 40 system. I ordered these stepper motors with built in encoders. Encoders mean they can sense if anything goes wrong, such as missteps or similar, and stop the machine. This feels like a pretty vital feature considering how much more dangerous this is compared to a tiny 3D printer. I'm going to use Mac 3 software which requires a dedicated PC so I started planning out the layout. After doing some checking I figured there would be enough space and started putting a box together for it. This is all using whatever I had lying around so if you're wondering about the weird mix of materials that's why. Some plaster and paint can do wonders even for a basic wooden box. To make sure nothing runs too warm, I've added three inlet fans with filters on the front and two exhaust fans on the rear. This should hopefully keep the case at a slight overpressure, preventing dust from getting sucked in wherever it might leak. I ran out of wood sheets and decided to make the openable door from sheet metal instead. Nothing beautiful, but it should do the trick. I made some brackets to hold up various components in the case. They're a mix of uh, aluminium and steel. Here is pretty much an entire PC compartment. The GPU is connected through a flex cable, so it takes less space. In comes the small 24 and 5 volt supply, three 70 volt supplies, and I also started fitting the three stepper drivers. Everything is now in the case and I have started wiring everything up. I kind of stopped counting once I got above 80 separate wires. Cables going outside of the box to the stepper motors and encoders go through the stress release things at the bottom. Case pretty much finished. I made a 3D printed start switch on the top, which ended up being an absolutely horrible position. I have hit this so many times accidentally. After this, I started installing everything. I ended up on Mac 3 and Windows XP. I tried Windows 7, but could not get it to work. It would repeatedly crash. With the PC and software parts done, I started looking at the mill. I did a few templates with paper, then moved on to cutting everything up and printing the pieces full scale. With these templates, I could then use a transfer punch to get my holes perfectly aligned. Some drilling and threading later, I started attaching everything to make sure my CAD models made sense in real life. Since I figured it would be really difficult to get the belt tension perfectly, I designed this overcomplicated belt tensioner. With both Z and Y having their plastic templates mounted, I decided to check how well this would work. And I instantly saw a big problem. The shafts are quite bent, which will constantly change the belt tension. With the digital indicator, I could check more carefully exactly where it was bent and by how much. I took some more random scraps and made a sheeter bar to try and carefully bend the axles back. They didn't seem to be too hardened, so I hoped they would not break. The pipe closest to the axle is also quite soft, so it doesn't bend it too harshly at one point. Or, well, that's the idea anyway. After carefully pushing and pulling on the axle, I managed to get it down within a few microns, so the belt pulley should not wobble. Feeling satisfied so far, I started remaking all the plastic parts in metal. Since I'm almost only using scraps, there's a lot of squaring up and cleaning. Pretty much going through the steps of band sawing to rough size, milling four sides to square and then planing the big surfaces. I'm using a rougher end mill here because the surface finish isn't as important at this step, and this is way faster. Here's a tool change on this mill to give you an idea of how it works if you haven't used a mill before. I hope to make this semi-automatic in the future, or at least have the drawbar powered so I can just click a button instead of using a wrench back and forth. Uh, this procedure is a bit tedious. This 160mm or 6.3 inch face mill is definitely on the upper limit of what this vertical head can handle, but it saves a lot of time and leaves a good finish once you get the settings right.
These plates don't need to be 100% flat, so I left a little low spot rather than taking off even more material. After squaring and facing the plate, it's time to spot drill to get an accurate position and minimize wandering when it's time for the real drill. This plate has two bigger holes where I decided to try hole sawing. It's quite difficult on this machine because there's no quill and the knee is very heavy, making it incredibly insensitive. On power feed it doesn't break the ships well enough and manual feed it's near impossible to be sensitive enough with. Before I could catch it, it stuck the hole saw real good. Eventually I kinda got the hang of it but it was definitely a stressful maneuver. Something which would have been super easy on a good drill press or if I just had a quill or if it was already CNC converted. The next hole is even bigger, so I tried something else here. First marking the hole with the hole saw to get an idea of where it's going to cut. I then drill holes around the perimeter. This will both break and clear the ships so the cut doesn't clog up and lock the drill. This ended up working much better and I didn't have to constantly lift the saw to clean the cut. Again, it's kind of funny how fast and easy this hole would have been if the machine was already CNC converted. I made 5 different plates pretty much following this procedure, so quite a few hours were spent on just these steps. Next came the spacers. Since this was a hot roll bar, I had to do some cleanup here as well. I need a bunch of shorter pieces, but I found it much more efficient to clean the whole thing up first and then do the cutoffs. Once I was satisfied with the size and finish, I started marking out where I would need to cut before polishing it up with different sandpapers and a polish compound. You have to be mindful here of what you're doing and where your hands are. Getting stuck in even a small machine like this will hurt you pretty bad. After cutting the long rod into pieces, it's time to face the exactly drill tap every one of them, 12 in total. With the spacer done, I started making a piece that would hold the second support bearing. This should ensure the Z and Y axles don't bend again from the belt tension. Sometimes it's just way faster to bandsaw the excess off instead of milling it down. Drilling all the positions with a small starter and then moving up in size. For the bearing fit, I used a boring head to get it perfectly round and precise. Finally, we have the parts for a complete axis and can start mounting it to the mill. Tensioner that ended up not getting used because it wasn't needed. If needed, it can be used to push onto the belt until it's tight enough, which I did on the set axis. I hastily connected everything to see if it would move and besides the fact that I forgot to install the support bearing correctly, everything seemed great. And then starting assembling everything for the set axis, here I ended up using the tensioner as I mentioned before. With Z and Y done, I turned my attention to X. I improved my temple here so it would center better and then as before I used a transfer punch where I would want my mounting screws to sit. I didn't have a small enough end mill for this piece so I ended up having to make the slots manually after some drilling. The slots allow the entire plate to move up and down and since the motor will be mounted on this plate it changes the belt tension. This is the solution I probably should have used on Z and Y to reduce complexity. Here's the entire X assembly finished. Just needs a ship cover and maybe some finishing touches for looks. You probably get why it needs a ship cover here, luckily just milling plastic. Here's one of the actual CNC programs. This was handwritten and is incredibly inefficient. The feed rates are also a bit slow so I have time to stop it if something seems to go wrong. All it's doing is facing this piece of steel. As I've never done any CNC milling before, I started really slow and careful. Second program here was generated in Fusion 360 and then hand edited a bit. Just drilling a bunch of holes for a future project. I didn't understand the different tool settings here, which is why it became quite a big problem after I changed a longer drill. Problem was that it now tried to drill way too deep. I'm lucky it didn't reach the cast iron. 
my quick fix was to stop it before going too deep and then move on to the next hole which is why it pauses at the bottom of each hole. Which ultimately cost this. Lesson learned, set your tool lengths properly. This is probably my fifth attempt or so, trying to cut a U-shaped thing out of this plastic. I tried using compressed air for ship clearing, but it wasn't enough and the groove tended to clog up. This cutter is also much too dull for plastic. I also suspect that a rougher isn't correct to use for a plastic. And not to mention it's stupidly oversized for doing contouring, but it's the smallest I had at the time. At least I'm learning a lot. That's all I have for now, but I have much more planned for this project. Thanks for watching.